When depression or heaviness comes on a person, it comes in gradually, day by day. The greatest way to defend against the attack of the enemy is to daily strengthen yourself in joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's learn more about this on today's episode of Faith Builders. Welcome to Faith Builders. It is an honor to have you tune in today, and I am very excited about what we're going to be talking about today as we learn how to maintain our joy. Before we get into this teaching today, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of our partners. Your faithfulness means so much to Pastor Philip and to me. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this ministry. Together, we're able to touch so many lives and to preach the gospel in two different languages. And so I want to say thank you again. And I want to encourage you to release your faith for the harvest and the abundant return that God wants to bring into your life as you're a partaker of the grace upon this ministry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, we are going to get into something that is a very vital truth for our lives and it's something that's our responsibility to develop and to maintain. It is a supply that the Lord supplies for us and yet we are responsible to yield to that supply and to become skilled in, uh, in tapping into that supply. And we're talking about the joy of the Lord today and we're talking about how to maintain that joy. And often when I've been in services in the time that I've been saved of the last 20 some odd years, 20, 25, 26 years in this time, I've experienced, I've been in services where that was the sermon title. And usually um, either the Holy Spirit moves in such a way that people respond with a, a manifestation of joy or the, they're in kind of like the person ministering is trying to get people to come on let's show some joy show some joy but my intent is for us to let the word of god identify how this is supposed to be a constant part of our day not just something that happens once in a while not just something that we yield to when things are good and we show a lot of emotional rejoicing but that we activate joy every day as a defense as an access point for the the waters of salvation with joy you'll draw draw water out of the fountain the the well of salvation these are um the, this is our lifestyle a joy lifestyle because joy is a part of the flow of the kingdom and that's where i want to start let's start right there at romans 14. it says this in romans 14 17 for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy. It's telling us the kingdom of God. These are some of the things that would identify or mark the way the kingdom operates. The kingdom of God, the righteousness is identifying our position of receiving from God, our position of interacting in the kingdom. I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so this righteousness is, the, is where I, I do business from. This righteousness that I am is a protection for me as well. It says it's a breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. And so this is part of the kingdom, righteousness. And then it says the kingdom of God is righteousness. It is peace and joy. And so when we identify that this is something that is a way the operation of the kingdom is marked, this is a, an indicator that we're 
Um, this is how we, we do business, righteousness, peace, and joy in the kingdom. And then in the next chapter, over in chapter 15 and verse 13, it says, The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. That you may, it says the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you can abound in hope. So I see here that he wants us to be abounding in this hope, which is a confident, earnest, eager expectation of good. He wants us to be abounding in it. And to do that, he is going to fill us with this joy. And it, not some joy. It didn't say he'll fill you with a little bit of joy. He'll fill you with, he'll give you a little portion of joy. It says he wants to fill you with all joy. Fill you with all joy. And peace in believing. So this joy that he wants me to have, it is a part, it is a, a part of the kingdom. And it is also something that is going to help me when I'm in the process of believing. When I'm in the process of faith, this joy and this peace are going to be uh, integral parts of my faith. And so he wants me to be filled with all joy. And many people are really focused on being happy. They make their decisions based on what's going to make them happy. They choose their job based on what's going to make them happy. They, um, they, they get into the relationship with, uh, uh, with their spouse based on what's, they choose their spouse based on what's gonna make them happy. And that is so temporary. Happiness is based on what happens. It is actually a word. Happiness comes from the Latin word hap. And, and so does the word happen. <laughs> it is based on what happens. And so we as believers, we operate differently. We're in the kingdom. We operate by kingdom operations, kingdom principles. And joy is the principle. It is a greater flow than a flow of happiness. And it is a greater operation than what happiness can produce. Joy can do for me things that happiness cannot do. Joy is strength. Happiness isn't strength. Happiness won't, being happy won't make you any stronger, but being joyful will. And we're going to see that from the word today. Uh, joy, it says, with joy you can draw water out of the wells of salvation, Isaiah 12, 3. Uh, happiness can't do that. Happiness isn't a spiritual container that can draw out of this well, this supply, this provision of salvation for us. So happiness is limited and it is temporary and it is not nearly as fulfilling as joy is. As believers, joy should be our... Um, our goal. It should be our emphasis. It should be what we're, I'm, I'm really not aiming for what makes me happy. I'm really aiming for the, what the Lord wants. And then I'm going to have the joy of the Lord, which is a supply of provision in my life. So joy is the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5, 22, it lists it there with the other fruit of the spirit. It is a, one of the characteristics of the spiritual flow that's ours because we're born again. And so this is not a feeling. Joy is not a feeling. And so if you're looking in your emotions to find it, it's not going to be there. If you wait to rejoice when you feel like rejoicing, you won't be rejoicing very much. And that's why a lot of times I, I, I remember the first church that I got after I got saved and uh, the, one, one of the first churches, not the very first, but one of the first churches I attended, there was, you know, we, I was a, a, a full gospel church. And uh, so people would praise and jump and shout and run. And there was one sister and it, when the, when the music hit the right tempo <laughs> and when the, when the service just hit that one place, then she would respond and, and she would jump up and spin and, and, and shout but it was only when that music got her to a place, an emotional place, a state of that she then entered into responding. That's not joy. Joy, we can rejoice no matter what's happening. 
We can rejoice no matter what the situation is because that's not the motivation for my rejoicing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And you know, when you think about it in Nehemiah 8, which is that where that phrase comes from, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It comes from in Nehemiah, the story where the leaders were reading the scriptures to the people because they were rebuilding the wall. Ezra reads the law to them and they realize how far they've fallen short, how much they've missed it. And, and they began to cry. And the leaders of the church stand up and say, no, that is not the response we need today. That is not going to help us. And of course, there's a time for repentance. There's a time for, for, for that. But this was not that situation. This was they wanted to cry and see how, how far they didn't have what they needed and what they had fallen short from. But he says to them in verse 10, go your way. Eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. He's talking about a feast. He's talking about a celebration. He said, for this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Well, they were in the middle of rebuilding a lot and putting things back in order. They needed strength. They did not need to be caught with the, uh, under an enemy attack weak. They did not need to be facing the things that they were facing without strength. And so he says, this is a day that's holy unto the Lord. Do not be grieved. Do not be sorrowful. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I want to give us the definition for this word strength according to uh, the original language. It actually means a well-fortified place, a well-fortified place. It means a defense, a fierce, a, a force, a fortress, a rock or a stronghold a stronghold, a well-fortified place, a defense. The joy of the Lord is your stronghold. The joy of the Lord is your well-fortified, safe place. The joy of the Lord is a defense to you. That's important, especially when you're under attack. You know what this tells me then is that I don't need to wait to rejoice only when I feel good or when everything is just right. I need to rejoice when everything looks wrong. <laughs> I need to rejoice when everything looks like it's going in the wrong direction, turning south, going bad. And when, when, when the natural response would be tears, when the natural response would be uh, um, sadness, in the kingdom, the kingdom response is joy because that's how I'm going to get enough strength to make it through what just happened. That's how I am going to gain the strength in my life to deal with this difficulty. And so that's why joy is not based on what you feel like and it's not based on what you're going through. It's not based on what happens. That's happiness. Joy is supplied to us in our heart by the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. We have an access of joy. We have access to the joy of the Lord. And whenever we need to raise up our, our shields and put a defense up against the attack of the enemy or to resist the curse, Joy is a defense. Joy is a safe place. Joy is a well-fortified position, a defense for us. And the Amplified says it this way, Do not be grieved and depressed, for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. Don't be grieved. Don't be depressed, for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. The Expanded Bible says it this way, Do not be sad, do not grieve or mourn because the joy of the Lord will make you strong. The, the joy of the Lord will make you strong. You know, in the book of Psalms, there's a scripture that said that the children of Ephraim, talking about one of the tribes of Israel, the children of Ephraim being, uh, they were armed, but it says, they were armed with their bows and their arrows, but be, they turned back in the day of battle because their strength 
was small. Their strength was small. They were armed. They had all of the equipment for battle, but they turned back because their strength was small. Well, according to this verse, strength comes from joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So you could say that they turned back in the day of battle because their joy was small. And that's what we need to, to learn how to check our joy level. You know, when I was first, uh, I, I remember one of the first cars I had. It was a Pinto. And not only did this Pinto lose all the transmission fluid every time I drove it, I, had to, I bought the transmission fluid by the case. And I would keep a case of transmission fluid in this car <laughs> because every time I started it, I had to put some transmission fluid in it. And I had to also buy a lot of oil too because the oil just ran through that car. And as a young teenage girl, I had to learn how to check my oil. I had to learn and because listen, if you don't, that car will blow up. One of our, our youngest daughter, she, we kept telling her, we taught her how to check the oil and she had a car that was a little bit older and we were telling her, now this is a good car. There's nothing wrong with this car. But if you run it till there's no oil in it, no matter how good of a car it is, if, there, if the oil leaks out of it or runs out of it, it's not going to last long. It's going to blow up. That engine is going to seize up. Well, sure enough, she got lazy about it and did not check that oil. And her dad would tell her every week, did you check your oil? Did you check your oil? He, you know, he told her, if you want to bring it by here and I'll, I'll check it for you. But she neglected all of the encouragement, all of the instruction. And one day that car blew up and it cost her her engine. <laughs> She, we had to replace the engine in that car because she did not keep oil in the car. And, you know, joy levels are something that need to be checked daily. It, Jesus wants our joyful. He said it, you know, in, in John uh, 14, 15, and 16, Jesus has a discussion with his disciples about some of the most important changes that are about to take place before he goes to the cross. Because at the cross, everything changed in, in their, their access and their authority and in, in, in expectations. And so he goes over some important things with them in this long conversation that takes three chapters in the book of John. He talked to them about the, the relationship change with them and the Holy Spirit. He said, before now, the Holy Spirit's been with you, but after this, He's going to be in you. And He's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to teach you. He's going to show you things to come. He went through all of these different things that were going to be as a result of this change in the way the Holy Spirit was going to relate to them. He talked to them about the, their uh, going to experience a greater demand of love. He said, before now, you've heard it said that you're supposed to love uh, as you love yourself. But I'm telling you from now, I want you to love like I've loved you, which raises the bar, doesn't it? And then he said this. He said, um, you've not, before now, you've not asked anything of the Father in my name. But now I want you to ask in my name. From now on, you're going to ask the Father in my name. And then he made this statement in John 16, so that your joy may be full. He said also in this chapter, I've said these things to you so that my joy could be in you and that your joy could be full. And then he said, ask the Father in my name so that your joy could be full. And the Weiss translation says, so that your joy reaching a place of fullness can continue in that condition or state of fullness. Jesus wants our joy full. He doesn't want us living half joy level. He doesn't want us living at a quarter of a level of joy. He wants us on full joy, full joy, maximum joy all the time. There's a scripture in the book of James where he says in James chapter 1, when you fall into diverse ten temptations, it says, consider it all joy. Consider it all joy or count it all joy. And the Berkeley translation says, consider it maximum joy. Consider it. In other words, when you fall into those diverse temptations, now is the time. Make sure your joy tank is on full. Don't be going through a difficult situation with about to blow your engine because you haven't been checking your joy level. 
keep your joyful and how do you keep joyful? If it's a, it's a fruit of the spirit, it's available to us, but our yielding to it and our, our rejoicing brings a fullness of manifestation, uh, manifestation in our life. Rejoice in the Lord always, the apostle Paul said. Rejoice in the Lord always and again, I say rejoice. That's the Holy Spirit talking to us today. Rejoice in the Lord always. That's how you keep your joy full. That's how you access the salvation that is available for you. With, the, with joy, you will draw waters out of the wells of salvation. With the, with the container of joy, with your joy bucket, you can j rejoice in the Lord and you can access strength. The joy makes you strong. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. That's what the expanded Bible says of Nehemiah 8.10. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the strong spirit of a man will sustain him in bodily pain or trouble. That's the amplified version of Proverbs 18.14. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain. If you're in a, a battle for your health, you need joy. You need faith, but you need joy too. Joy and, f and peace work together with our believing. And so joy gives strength. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. And when your spirit is strong, it's easier to stand in victory. It's easier to resist that sickness. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up? Who can bear it? It says, and so a weak spirit is one that is full of sadness. A weak spirit is one that is down, down, down. When you allow grief, when you allow despair, when you allow sadness to have a continual operation in your heart, what's gonna happen is it's gonna deplete your spiritual forces. It's gonna drain you just like that oil would consistently run out of that car. That, that sadness is gonna just leak out all of your strength and leak out all of your, your spiritual um, stamina until the enemy can just come in and move on your life and there's no ability within you to raise up and resist it. Why? Because we need joy. We need the strength of the Lord and joy is our strength. So I want to encourage you to maintain your joy. We've got a lot uh, more in some of the resources that we're going to be offering with this. But, you know, one of the most important things for you to in, in, enter into this joy is that you've got to know Jesus as Lord. If you're watching me today and you would say, Michelle, I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord. I mean, even if you've gone to church for years but never made the decision to accept Him into your heart as your Lord and Savior, if you've never believed on Jesus, today is your day. And I'm gonna give you this opportunity to pray and to ask Him in and receive him. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and you declare out of your mouth that Jesus is your Lord. So let's pray this together. Would you just lift your voice with me right now and say, I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sin. I believe that Jesus poured out his blood to wash me clean. I believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead and today I accept Jesus Christ to be my Savior, my Lord. Lord, wash me, cleanse me. I receive the new life. I receive eternal life in my heart right now as I accept you as my Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you will lead me and you will guide me. I want the fullness of all that you have for me. So today I accept the fullness of the Holy Spirit in my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. That decision has changed your life. You're not the person you were before you made that decision and before you declared that out of your mouth. You're a new creature in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says that he became sin who knew no sin 
so that you could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are now righteous before God. Verse 17 says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You're new. You're not the same person that you were. You're a righteous person made in the image of God. And now you are his son, his daughter. You are his child and he is going to lead you if you'll follow him. And the way to follow him is to learn how to follow his word. You need a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, you need a Bible. My first Bible cost me 25 cents. I got it from the thrift store. And I read it, still have that Bible. But you need a Bible to understand who you are. And you need a Bible to understand what belongs to you. Because His Word is a revelation of His will. God does not want you from this day forward to wonder what His will is. He wants you to know what His will is. And when you renew your mind to the Word, you can know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you need a Bible and you need a pastor. You need a local church. If you're in the Little Rock area, we welcome you at Faith Builders. We welcome you. You need a pastor because Jesus set the pastor in the church. Jesus set the local church. He's the head of the local church and he sets the gifts in the local church. And the pastor is the gift of God to your life to feed you the word of God and to help protect and watch over your soul. And so you need a Bible and you need a pastor wherever you are. Make those two things priority in your life. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to say again, thank you to all of our partners. Thank you for being a faith builder. Together we're changing the world with the Word of God, bringing light into the darkness and, and declaring faith into people's lives. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you to build your faith and to frame your world by the Word of God. I'll see you next week. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership. Many people are only focused on what makes them happy in life. As a believer, our focus should be on joy instead of happiness. The Word of God tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength and a strong defense. Joy is a flow of the kingdom and a companion to our faith. This series, Maintaining Our Joy, is made available to you free of charge as a gift from Pastors Philip and Michelle Steele and all of the generous partners who sow into the Word Supply. To order your copy, call 501-400-8797 or contact us at buildfaith.net. Pastor Michelle emphasizes the will of the Lord is to provide us with His joy and to enable us to live in a fullness of joy. These messages will encourage you to access and to maintain your supply of joy. I see a church that's a faith building church. I see people coming to this church and having their faith built in the power of God. I see people coming to this church and having their faith built in the integrity of God's Word. I see people coming to this church and learning the principles of faith. People learning what faith is and how to operate the faith that God has given them.